start with you. Welcome to worship at the Stratum Community Church. Welcome to you if you are worshiping with us for the first time, or if you worship with us all the time. Welcome to you if you are worshiping with us online, and welcome to you if you are here worshiping with us in person. <laughs> welcome to you no matter how big your faith is, or how small your faith is. Welcome to you if you are gay or straight or somewhere in between. Welcome to you, no matter your race, no matter your gender, no matter your social status. Welcome to you, no matter what. My name is Pastor Wes, and I am the pastor of this faithful church, the church who strive, strives to follow God's spirit wherever she goes. I want to begin our uh, announcements just by briefly highlighting our COVID guidelines. As a part of our re-entry plan, we will continue to record our services and make them available on YouTube. Masks are required for unvaccinated people and optional for people who are vaccinated. As you enter the church this morning, you may have noticed some of our pews roped off. This is to accommodate congregational singing in worship. An offering plate is in the rear of the center aisle, which you may have also noticed when you enter the church. You can place your offering in there as you enter or, or leave the church today. You may also make your offering online using the QR code found in the back of the announcements portion of the bulletin. At the conclusion of worship, um, following the benediction, we ask that you lovingly dismiss yourselves from your rows, and you are free and welcome to linger in the lawn following worship. Um, all young people are invited to join us for summer Sunday school. We are normally meeting outside in the garden. Um, due to the swampiness of the garden today, we'll be meeting in the rust room, which is found in the lower level of the church. We do ask that for summer Sunday school, since we will be indoors, that everyone wear masks. Um, you can meet myself and Anna Sura there immediately following worship. Summer Sunday school will conclude on Sunday, August 8th. This afternoon at 1 p.m. in Stratum Hill Park is a public celebration of life for Kieran Roche. All are welcome and invited to attend. I know that the O'Shea and Brown family really appreciate your support and would love to see you there today. Are there any other announcements at this time? Seeing none, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with today's prayer. Thank mm -hmm.
Please stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship printed in the bulletin. Jesus said, Come with me and rest a while. I am the good shepherd, and I will lead you to green pastures and still waters. God, we need nothing else but you. You guide us along the paths of righteousness and restore our souls. Come, set out in the way of your Lord. God safely leads us through the shadowy valleys. God's staff guides and comforts us. God anoints our heads with oil and our, our cups overflow. With God, goodness and mercy are our souls. Let us dwell in the house of God our whole life long. Let us lift our voices in song as we sing together the hymn, All My Hope on God is Founded, number 408 in the Black New Century Hymn.
thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I'm sure later this afternoon, we'll do that again. The second reading is from Mark. Chapter 6, verses 30 to 34, and 53 to 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to be deserted to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Generous and moored their boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. That is the end of the morning lesson. Thank you, Liz. The title of my sermon for today is Why Psalm 23? Why Psalm 23? Will you be with me in prayer? Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We think we know Psalm 23 really well. I bet many of us have it me memorized. If there is a funeral on TV or on a Netflix series, these words, the Lord is my shepherd, are what we hear. We see the words of Psalm 23 decoupage onto pieces of barnwood, like the one that hung in my grandmother's stairway. We see Psalm 23 on coffee cups, on calendars, Psalm 23 is everywhere. Psalm 23 has brought us comfort and has restored our souls. But sometimes, familiarity and comfort allow us to miss the meaning. To be clear, Psalm 23 is the right thing for our coffee mugs, our calendars, and for funerals. But it is good to know why. Scholar Walter Brueggemann points out that there is a structural poetic pattern to almost every psalm in the Bible. He says that the psalms begin with a scene of orientation, then they move to disorientation, and end in a place of reorientation. The Psalms follow a pattern of life. We set out knowing where we are going, what is up and what is down, what is right and what is wrong, and then something happens that muddles this. And eventually we end up on the other side of things with a new perspective. Psalm 23 follows this pattern. It begins there in the green pastures, 
still waters and on clear paths. But in the next stanza, we find ourselves in the shadowy valley, needing God's comfort and protection from evil. At the final few verses of this song, we learn that we have been given what we need to make it through the valley, and that God's goodness has followed us and will follow us. Now, in addition to mimicking the ebbs and flows of life, Psalm 23 is a bold declaration of faith. We say, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I say that this is bold because there are so many other shepherds to choose from. My social media stream tells me that the latest like and follow will be my shepherd. The algorithms from my web browser, they tell me it's the latest shoes and shorts that are going to keep me. When I read the news each morning, it tells me that cynicism and breaking news is what will keep me. Sometimes my doubts and fears, they tell me that I can be my own shepherd. There are plenty of shepherds, but Psalm 23 tells us that the Lord is my shepherd. Maybe these other things can shepherd me. Maybe I can be my own shepherd and likely find my way to a green pasture. But those green pastures are usually never green enough. Psalm 23 shows us why we ought to have God as our shepherd. So here's the spoiler alert. It's not because God is going to give us what we want. And it's not because God is going to wave that shepherd's crook like a magic wand and manipulate the world to suit us. In fact, Psalm 23, here we see God as our shepherd going through us through deep and dark valleys. And the psalm is up front with us about these deep and dark valleys and that we will go through them. But this is counterintuitive to what we might want in a shepherd. I know that I want a shepherd to eliminate those valleys and get rid of evil and shadows. But this isn't what we get. And that's why having God as our shepherd in Psalm 23, we get a shepherd who is with us and who knows us. And this is what we need. Both God and Psalm 23 aren't here for anyone's protection, but are here for everyone's support. They are here for everyone's support. As the famed preacher William Sloan Coffin once put it, God gives us minimum protection, maximum support. Minimum protection, maximum support. With God as our shepherd, we will be satisfied. With God as our shepherd, we will make it from disorientation to reorientation. With God as our shepherd, we will be in green pastures, beside calm waters, and on the right path. With God as our shepherd, we will not be lost in the dark valleys and in the shadows. God is with us when we need nourishment and when our cups overflow. God is with us even when we think we are lost. Now, many of the 150 songs that are in our Bible, they are attributed to King David. And according to the Bible itself, 
King David found himself in some shadowy valleys, like the one where he stood next to Goliath. The Lord was David's shepherd there, not shielding him from struggle, but giving him presence to hope. God with us, Emmanuel, is the presence that gave Paul and Silas to sing themselves out of jail. Thou art with us is how refugees from Central America take the next treacherous step. God, our shepherd, is the one who trembled with us throughout the pandemic and whose presence comes and sustains us still. Now, if you find it yourself looking for how God, the Good Shepherd, accompanied you, let Psalm 23 be your God. Find that Psalm 23 mug, turn the calendar over to the month that is emblazoned with those familiar words, or flip open your Bible. Pray with the words of Psalm 23 overlaid on your life. The Lord is my shepherd and has made me to lie down in green pastures and near still waters. What are the green pastures and still waters in your life? How has God restored your soul? The Lord is my shepherd even when I walk in the darkest valley and when evil surrounds me. Where have been the dark valleys in your life? Look for the good shepherd there. Because Christ has been there. Christ is there now and Christ will be. Let the verses of Psalm 23 go with you. Notice the shepherd moving alongside you and alongside us. And with God as our shepherd, our hope and our stay, surely it is goodness and mercy that will follow us all the days of our life. Let us follow the Good Shepherd by singing together the hymn, My Shepherd is the Living God, hymn number 247, found in the Black New Century Hymn. Please stand as you are able.
always with us, forever knowing us. No matter how lush the pasture or how scary the valley, the shepherd is there. Let us bring our lives and world to God in prayer. And as we do so, I invite you to lift up any prayers you would like to make known now. Seeing none, let us continue our prayer together with our pastoral. Let us pray. Lord, we are your sheep, and you are our shepherd. You tend to our every need, and you seek us out when we go astray. In Jesus, your Son, you gave us a good shepherd whose love showed us your way. And this day, your Holy Spirit is with us, treading alongside us and calling us ever closer to you. God, who shaped our every wonder and all of creation, and set green pastures and still waters before us, make us to shepherd and steward your bounteous creation in the same way you care for us. In rejoicing for the beautiful and fruitful world you have made, we also weep in the face of natural disasters and call out for your mercy. By your spirit, keep safe those whose lives and homes have been destroyed by flooding in Germany, and keep watch with those who have died. Make the firefighters battling the fires in Canada and in the American West to be sustained by your power and keep them safe. Lord, you are our shepherd. Be of us. Christ, Emmanuel, you are God with us. You have been our help in ages past. Will be our help for years to come, and you are our hope now. Rid the world of the coronavirus, and wrap your sustaining love around those places suffering from the Delta variant. Draw near to the leaders of the nations. Make them to long for peace, and open their hearts to pleas for basic human needs in their own countries and beyond. Be with the people of Afghanistan and all who face daily danger. Give hope and stability to Cubans in their demand for justice. And pour your grace upon the leaders of this country, the United States, that they would seek common concerns and legislate for all Loving God, you go with us in the valley. You come beside us when we are in the wilderness and speak to us when we can't find our way. Be present to all who suffer from substance abuse and addiction. Give hope and comfort to families in the wake of drug overdoses. Take our wounds and heal them, Lord. Shepherd those who are weary, depressed, and languishing. Bless the work of mental health counselors and therapists. Lead us all to still waters, Lord. Holy Spirit, we pray for our denomination, the United Church of Christ, as its general synod comes to an end. Send your Holy Spirit upon the United Church of Christ, that we would continue to be your faithful servants, your hands and your feet on earth. Abide with this church, 
and those among us who call upon your name. Enfold with your tender love the Brown and O'Shea families, and come close to Robin, Dottie, Jennifer, Sarah, and Sue. Living and loving God, we ask all these things in the name of your Christ, who with the Holy Spirit is among us still. Amen. The psalmist tells us that we are to make known what God has done. We are to tell of God's wonderful acts and to give thanks for God's love. How have you noticed God's love in your life? I invite you to share the places where you have seen God's love moving with a thankful dollar at our thank offering. You can do so by coming forward and we'll meet you with a mic and the offering. Another Iowa new I'm just back from a week uh, at Horton Center on Pine Mountain, up in the White Mountains. If you don't know about it, it's a fabulous place with great views from multiple ledges. Um, we have 39 kids uh, from uh, really all over the Northeast, and um, they had a great time. And so did I. It took me right back to when I was a kid going to church camp. Um, a wonderful experience in all the ways. Thank you, John Mark, for your service to the wider church. Thank you, guys. Uh, I am thankful for another week at Scout Camp this week with the Boy Scouts. With, uh, we took a stack of boys and three girls to Hidden Valley Scout Reservation for the week. A little bit wet, but everybody survived and uh, came back as stronger people. Uh, we're grateful. It reminded me of when I went to camp because Linda Hamill was there. Linda Hamill was the scout leader when my kids were there, and that was a while ago. <laughs> and I was thankful while they were at scout camp for a week alone with Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that Jennifer, who has been on the prayer list, is my sister who was diagnosed with breast cancer in January. And we've had great news that she had her uh, second major surgery and uh, was allowed to go home on Friday. And she just has one more minor one coming up, but she's doing really, really well. So I think soon we'll be able to remove her from the list, but I'm very grateful for all your prayers and um, she's doing really well and she's strong and happy and um, things look good. Excellent. Praise God for that, Christine. Thank you so much for sharing that good news. Anybody else? Anyone else? It is right to give God thanks and praise and we surely have done this with our whole heart. It is God's abundance that gives us green pastures and still waters. And through the work of our hands and hearts, we participate in making these green pastures and still waters available to all of our neighbors. So let us bring them forward the gifts of our hearts and our hands. The morning's offering will now be received.
of all that we have. You give so that our cups overflow and that our pastures are lush. We give because of your abundance, O God. Transform these gifts so that the needs of our neighbors become our needs, their hunger, our hunger, so that in sharing and doing mercy, we would come to better know you, our Christ. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, hymn number 327, found in the Red Pilgrim. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.